Have a good day my friends, this is the lastest Dolphins news. The Miami Dolphins players return to the volunteer workouts. Miami Dolphins sign exclusive rights free agent, ERFA, Nick Needham. Miami Dolphins trade number 6 pick in 2021 NFL Draft. The debate between one of the top O-linemen and one of the best offensive playmakers in the 2021 draft. Kyle Pitts and Penny Sewell, who should Miami choose? Please subscribe, don't miss the lastest news. The Miami Dolphins players return to the volunteer workouts. One of the big movements across the NFL right now is players pushing back to some extent against voluntary workouts and organized team activities. The push, which is rooted both in data from 2020 that showed a virtual offseason helped boost player safety and protect from injury and also concerns regarding the COVID-19 policies in place for these events, prompted the Miami Dolphins to join a slew of teams across the league in issuing a statement via the NFL Players Association. Based in the Dolphins' statement, it appeared as though the team would be opting to sit out the voluntary workouts, which opened yesterday across the league. But reports out of South Florida have the Dolphins yesterday indicate that the Miami Dolphins were very intentional with their choice of words. Most specifically this juncture. The Miami Dolphins stand in solidarity with players across the league who are making informed decisions to exercise their right to not attend voluntary in-person workouts this offseason. But this doesn't say. The Miami Dolphins will not be partaking in in-person voluntary workouts themselves, which is now apparent based on a report from the Miami Herald's Adam Beasley that a good number of Miami Dolphins players chose to attend the first day of voluntary in-person workouts. Three days after collectively saying they stand in solidarity with their peers who are skipping voluntary in-person workouts this offseason over health and safety concerns, a good number of Miami Dolphins players chose to attend the first day of voluntary in-person workouts according to a source familiar with the organization. A surprising number of Dolphins players, including established veterans, decided to report Monday, the same day their union chief was stressing to reporters that those players were putting themselves at risk by doing so. Beasley's report indicates that the Dolphins' attendance was not full but that attendance wasn't close to zero. Miami Dolphins sign exclusive rights free agent, ERFA, Nick Needham. The Miami Dolphins made a big splash up front last night with the news that offensive lineman DJ Fluker was South Beach bound. The team has not confirmed the signing as of late last night but both Fluker and his agent have confirmed the agreement on social media. But the Fluker deal wasn't the only business the Dolphins were able to attend to on Monday as the team enters their last full week ahead of the 2021 NFL draft at the end of the month. Miami. According to NFL reporter Aaron Wilson, managed to get a deal signed with exclusive rights free agent, ERFA, Nick Needham, ensuring that the former undrafted free agent defensive back will be back with the team for a third season after serving as Miami's primary nickel throughout each of his first two years with the Dolphins. Needham, who has logged four interceptions and 18 career passes defense throughout his first 28 games with the Dolphins, has been a productive but erratic presence on has been a productive but erratic presence on the field. Having over 1,350 defensive snaps over the last two seasons, Needham is undeniably a big presence in the secondary and Miami will look to push him into added growth and development after signing veteran cornerback Justin Coleman to the roster this offseason to contend for the nickel role. With 12 penalties credited over the last two seasons, Needham has been giving opposing teams first downs with mishaps, an issue that must be amended sooner rather than later. Needham absolutely has a place in this Dolphins secondary. The team clearly trusts him to a certain degree to perform, but getting less panic with the ball in the air and trusting his technique will go a long way in seeing that trust rewarded on an end. What do you think about him? I rarely hear his name. Miami Dolphins trade number 6 pick in 2021 NFL Draft. The Miami Dolphins shook up the 2021 NFL draft order at the end of March with their decision to drop from number 3 overall to number 12 overall before swiftly bouncing back up the board and landing at number 6 overall. The musical chairs of the decision left the Dolphins with an extra 2023 first round pick and an extra 2022 third round pick for their efforts, setting the table for Miami to be loaded into the future with additional assets. But what if we told you the Miami Dolphins might not be done yet? Because if the latest report from NFL Network's Ian Rapoport becomes reality, 
we may yet see the Dolphins parlay a pick for additional capital. As Rapoport notes, there are a lot of things in play for this scenario. But what happens if the Dolphins see the Atlanta Falcons pivot to take Kyle Pitts and the Cincinnati Bengals scorn offensive tackle Penny Sewell in favor of W.R. Jamar Chase? If Chase and Pitt, could that open the door for the Dolphins to have the discussion about moving back down and getting more 2021 NFL draft capital back? Part of the sell for Miami's trade up to number six with Philadelphia was that the team parted with a future first round pick and not draft assets from this year. So even if Miami moves back down and does not recoup the first round pick they surrendered from 2022, getting a second round selection in 2021 would be considered a measurable return due to the one year wait time on that first round asset sent to Philadelphia. But any deal, this late in the game, figures to need to be on hold until the board falls on draft night. The Dolphins paid a price to jump up and survey the field at number 6 overall. They may as well ride things out until they come on the clock before making a determination on if they want to accept any offers for that pick that they may have received over the course of the last few weeks. But, at the very least, we know those offers exist. And it is apparently something the team is, consi something the team is considering. Should we trade out of 6th pick, everybody? A debate. Kyle Pitts and Penny Sewell, Miami who should you choose? Kyle Pitts and Penny Sewell first look. This is a debate between one of the top O-linemen and one of the best offensive playmakers in the 2021 draft. Oregon OT Penny Sewell vs Florida Tay Kyle Pitts. Penny Sewell, height, weight. 6 foot 4, 331 pounds. 2019 stats. 14 games, allowed 0 sacks two quarterback hits and seven pressures, opted out of 2020 season. Kyle Pitts, height, weight, 6'6", six six, 245 pounds. 2020 stats, eight games, 43 receptions for 770 yards and 12 touchdowns. Lance Zierling, NFL Network, Kyle Pitts, dream scenario here, as the Giants get a chance to choose between electric speed, Jalen Waddell, and matchup talent, Pitts. I see them taking the latter. Anthony the latter. Anthony Trish, Pro Football Focus. Penny Sewell, first things first, the chances of Sewell actually falling this far are slim. But this mock represents what I would do and not what the NFL would do, so a generational tackle falls right in the lap of Miami here at pick 6. Sewell recorded a 95.8 PFF grade in 2019 which still stands as the highest graded season by a Power 5 tackle since 2014. At 6'6", six six, 325 pounds, it's quite amazing watching Sewell move in space, the overall athleticism is off the charts. He earned a 95.7 grade as a run blocker in 2019 and was also nearly perfect in pass protection, allowing just 7 pressures on 491 snaps. Jordan Reed, The Draft Network Kyle Pitts, mocking an athletic tight end early for the Dolphins will give many pause, but whether it's W.R. or Tay, don't get caught up in the two letters in front of Pitty above player that can satisfy the roles of both a wide receiver and tight end. A serviceable blocker and unique weapon in the passing game, he has the potential to quickly turn into one of the more dangerous players at the position during the early stages of his career. So, who do you pick? Sewell or Pitts? Comment below. I've done quite a bit of analysis on Sewell and Kyle Pitts already, and you're probably fed up. But let's see how some of the other teams rate them. Start with Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts and Pro Football Hall of Famer Kellen Winslow Sr. It's been a very long time since a rising NFL tight end has generated the sort of hype that Florida Gators tight end Kyle Pitts has ahead of the 2021 NFL Draft. Pitts a unanimous All-American and the winner of the John Mackey Award in 2020, has been hailed as a generational tight end talent and seems like a sure thing to be a top 10 pick in the coming draft. And part of the hype surrounding him has been how he compares to some of the most exceptional tight ends to ever play the professional game. During an appearance on ESPN's Keyshawn, J. Will and Zubin, Texas A&M head coach Jimbo Fisher gave a glowing assessment of Kyle Pitts, comparing him to Pro Football Hall of Fame tight end Kellen Winslow given how he stands to evolve the tight end position forward in a similar way to Winslow. When I was a kid, coming up, Kellen Winslow was a guy that you just didn't see, said Fisher. 
And he was a guy that was so far ahead of his time, so far ahead of his time, in my opinion, the way he was used in San Diego, that that's the comparison I use. I mean, the guys now getting up, they all have greater numbers because the way the game's played. But there wasn't a Kellen Winslow. And I look at Pitts now, to me, and the tight ends in this league are the biggest mismatches in the league. They are the guys that are nightmares to match up. But Pitts, to me, takes another step from those guys because his ability to run 4, 4, 5 at that size and catch radius and be able to maneuver his body is different, like Winslow was different from everybody else back in the day, in my opinion. The number 13 overall pick by the San Diego Chargers in the 1979 NFL Draft, Winslow quickly became a receiving tight end unlike any that pro football had ever seen, leading the league in receptions in both 1980 and 1981 as part of the Air Coriel offense. Winslow was an enormous mismatch for defenses of the time, as zone defenses were not yet in vogue. Backers and strong safeties in the 1980s were not well equipped to defend a player of Winslow's caliber. Winslow made five Pro Bowls and earned four All-Pro nods, and he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1995. Pitts has been compared to Winslow by more than just Fisher. Last month, NFL Network's Peter Schrager shared that league circles have been discussing Pitts as akin to Winslow and Tony Gonzalez, another Hall of Fame tight end. You are hearing comparisons to all the great receiving tight ends, said Schrager. Tony Gonzalez gets mentioned, Kellen Winslow. He is that highly touted. Interestingly, Pitts played his college football in the backdrop of perhaps the greatest game of Winslow's career. In the 1981 AFC Divisional Playoffs, the Chargers played the Epic in Miami at the Orange Bowl, in which Winslow caught a then-record 13 passes for 166 yards and a touchdown while also blocking a field goal despite dealing with dehydration and severe cramps among other ailments. To this day, Winslow's performance in the 41-38 Chargers victory is still regarded as one of the great individual efforts in pro football history.